ladies and gentlemen, this is John Gray, and this is the John Olive Fifth Quarter Show with Coach John Olive, who's here with me this morning, and we are here after a, a second game of the season. We played Franklin County last night at home, brought them over here at home and played, and uh, and uh, suffered our second loss of the season. Second loss, and um, you know. A little perplexing. We know that we're going to struggle. We know that we've got some a lot of young players, um, but we just um, didn't play very well. And uh, you know, Coach Smith and his young men, uh, they came over and did what they needed to do. And uh, we've got to learn what we've got to be able to do just to be competitive. Right now, we're not competitive, and that's the way we were last year. We weren't competitive. We know we're better athletically this year. Right. We're young, but we are better athletically, and uh, and we've just got to be able to get to the point where we can compete. And if we get to the point where we can compete, then you got a chance to win a ball game. You got a chance to make a play or two that turn the ball game in your favor. And right now, it's just not happening. We're we're not close. Well, and and there there's several reasons for that. And I I think that one of the things is just the physical, the physical difference between a uh, a sophomore and a senior. And, it, there and it is. you know, you talk about holding up. You know, one of the things uh, every now and then uh, you need to switch some stuff, just like they just switched that camera where it needed to be, and that was that was an incredible thing, you know. And so everybody, everybody gets behind the curve just a little bit every now and then. But when when you know, I was talking about we're having trouble holding onto the ball. Well, you know, that's a difference in a senior hitting a sophomore. The you know it might be the fact yeah. that that hit you know when somebody 190 is hitting somebody 135 40, it makes a uh, it makes a difference. It's hard. I've been there. It's yeah. harder to hold on to that ball when that big old boy comes in there and throws the wood to you than it is somebody your size that you're used to playing with. Right. And and they're going to need to get stronger and and they will. Right. But we they don't quit. The they don't the quit. Last... It's the no, thing about it. The we thing. We protected the ball last week. I had one turnover. I right. think. And this ball game, everybody wanted to contribute to the turnover total. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, but we got the ball and we moved the ball down the field. And yeah, I was thinking, you yeah, know, it's only, it's only, uh, what was it at that point? 27? 20, no, what did it end up? 33? 33. Minus 6. So that'd be what? 26? Was it 26? 27. It was 30, 33 to 7 was the final score. Right, but before that, it was before 27. they scored. 27, you know, 27, we're at 7, 20 points, and and we, we're moving the ball down the field, and, you know, hey, we just might be able to, a couple touchdowns, and we're right back in this thing, because what was it in Franklin County about five years ago that we scored four in the last or three in the last quarter to tie it up and then one in overtime? We have had some great comebacks. And, yeah. Um, so you know. So you never give up, and those kids give didn't up. give up. You just uh, you got to keep playing, and <clears throat> but you got to, as you said, eliminate your mistakes. Well, okay, you know that, that killed us <clears throat> offensively last night, and, and that wasn't only turnovers. Uh, you know, we we've got to do a better job coaching. We've got to do a better job at getting our young men to understand what they got to do on each individual play. And um, not that we run a tremendous number of plays, but we're obviously running more than what our people are able to do right now and execute properly. And so we'll keep working on that. We'll you know, keep hammering away. If we are going to make some changes this week, uh, uh, we talked about it as a staff last night. We'll come together tomorrow afternoon. We'll decide on what changes we're going to make, how we're going to do some things. Uh, probably one of the things we're going to do is make some players one-way players to see if we can take some pressure off mentally right. of, of having to know both sides of the ball. Right. And even though that may not make us as athletic as we'd like to be, uh, we think that we've got to find those young men. We've got to take some pressure off somebody. Find, uh, find the other ones that will step up. And then give the others opportunities to step up. And... Uh, 
and you know, and that even becomes a depth factor. It, right, it allows right. others to move up. Somebody who's third team all of a sudden becomes second team, and, um, and we're going we're gonna to make some of those. It may not be all the way across the board, but it's going to be well significant enough that uh, we'll be a different looking football team uh, next Friday night when we play at Marshall County. Uh, the results may not make any difference, but we just think for the long run and uh, that we've got to take some pressure off some of these right, young men right. or they're not going to have any fun at all trying to play the game. So uh, there's several ideas that we kicked around last night and uh, we'll make decisions tomorrow there you go. after we've had a couple of nights to think about it and draw and put people in different places and then um, go back to work on Monday. There you go. All right. Folks, what we'll do right now is take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with the first quarter of Telehoma Franklin County 2016. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. What if every tailgate came with three months of wins? With an Ascend Auto Loan, you have the option of delaying your first payment for 90 days. That's a whole season on us. What if a loan application were as laid back as a Sunday drive? At Ascend, we make the auto loan process easy so you can apply for your loan and be on your way. Come to an Ascend Financial Center near you and see what's possible. Since 1917, Builder Supply has been the place to go for all your building materials. It's where the contractors have shopped for years. Builder Supply stocks quality Benjamin Moore paint, Tamco shingles, Case knives, DeWalt, Stanley, and Makita tools, Peachtree Southern Rose and Sun windows, Traders grills, Quick Set locks, General Shell brick, Yellow wood, and Pass Load nail guns and nails. Experienced salespeople are there to help you find the right products for your job. So when you're ready to build, whether large or small, think Builder Supply. 301 South Atlantic Street in Telahoma. captains for the last night number 15 Chase Dixon number 71 Ahmad Taylor and then the Eli Award winner was number 30 and uh, all of a sudden my mind has just went blank. Jacob Gray. <laughs> yeah, Jacob Gray. <laughs> <Number 30. exactly. laughs> uh, but anyway uh, it'll come. Yeah it will. Uh, the more I try to think about it, the, the worse, worse it it'll be. <laughs> so I'll go away and we'll talk about it. <clears throat> you know, it was, we were, I was wondering last night, uh, that when, about, about the time this, all this is going on, you know, there was, there was lightning back over behind the visitor side of the stadium and these big dark clouds were coming up and I thought, we even going to get this ball game played. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, I saw one big bolt vertical bowl and I wondered if it, officials were going to send us in or not. At that point in time it would only delay the game about five minutes. Right. But uh, anyway. Well it sure brought in a nice cool breeze. Yes. It cooled it down a lot. Chase Fowler on the kickoff and he executes what's called a little pop-up kickoff. 
and we got them at 32, which is about the best field position that we can get them into off that kick. Um, Sam Brock was down there on the tackle as well as a host of Wildcats. Uh, they open up running their quarterback just like last week and um, he gains a first down before we can get off blocks and run him out of bounds and uh, come back and run Johnson there and again big gapping hole two plays and about 25 yards uh, yeah we come back here and here comes the quarterback on a counter and Ahmad Taylor brings him down from behind and uh, good, pretty good feet right there. You know, both 5 and 27 are really, really good athletes, uh, but uh, we're just not getting off blocks, and we're staying blocked, and uh, finally yeah. dealing out. They've run four plays, and they have four first, they have four yeah. first downs. Yeah. And uh, I think they ended up rushing for 380-something yards last night, and well, we've got to figure out some things to, you know, and part of it is you just get physically mismatched sometimes, but other times we're just not using any technique at all to get off a block, and we've got to get disengaged. Uh, it does us no good to stay engaged with a blocker. And uh, they fumble the football right here, and Jacob Skibby makes the... Recovery for us, first play of the game, we're going to try to hit John Moore going deep, and they just can't pitch and catch. And uh, come back and run an option, and Chase reverses the field. Picks up a first down for us. And we get called for leaning in the backfield there. So now it's first and 15. And we're trying to hit Matt Ross on the slant mm, there. Mm, mm, mm. Throws a little high and- Sticky grip. We tip it right up in the air and their safety makes the interception. And then he's gone to the house. We're not gonna catch him. And uh, so we, Get a turnover to keep them out of the end zone. Give them one. And then we give it right back to them. And uh, so we find ourselves behind 7-0. And then we can't catch the kick. And we touch it. It goes out of bounds at the 8. So we put ourselves deeper in a hole. You know, I got a thing the other day from a college program. If you start the drive from inside your 10-yard line, 3% chance of you scoring. <laughs> uh, 3%. 3%. My goodness. Austin Mullins on the carry there, and then we at least get it out to give ourselves a chance here to get a first down. And we're going to throw a slant route. Or sorry, uh, we're going to throw the, a screen. And um, we trip over each other's feet. And uh, so instead of us having a shot at getting the first down there, we end up with. What a punt. Good punt by Chase. Bad job <coughs> blocking. Number 59. I don't know if anybody touched him all night long. Uh, Not much. We're going to have to really look at our punt team. We're going to have to look at making sure that they understand who they're blocking and that you're going to center them. You can't just wave at them. You can't touch them. you got to center them. And so we're going to go to work on that. We're not going to let that continue. I don't know. For some reason last night, Coach, I looked out there a couple of times, and we just looked small. Uh, were, were we that there, much smaller there than them? There there was, sometimes we were small. Now, we're not necessarily smaller than them right now. Right. But there are times that there's certain, when certain people get on the field, 
or others get off the field. That'd be the way. If you take 71 off the field and 54 off the field, right? We get real small real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, their backups may, you know, it just depends on who who goes into the ball game. But I know I saw several times that we were playing uh, Garrett Jennings and. Uh, oh, uh, Corbin Smith. Right. Uh, you, you drop real quick there to where you're down to playing 170 pounders. We had some big fourth downs in this area right in here in the game, and uh, here's. One coming up, and uh, the one previous to that, they get called for illegal motion, so they got to punt it. And, uh, we look like we don't get it in decent field position, and we, you know, they call unnecessary roughness. They don't allow you to do that anymore, and uh, you know, <laughs> so it's. Just frustrating. We're right back down inside the 10 yard line now. Back down to 3%. Yep. <laughs> uh, we get a penalty. I mean, we're just not a very good football team. And I thought we were right had a there. Shot, right there. The first down and can't hold uh, on to the ball. You know, it's one of those things, Matthew Meadows on the reception there, and he'll learn, he'll learn that you don't change the ball from one arm to the other in traffic, and that's what happened. He breaks out of that tackle, and he tries to change the ball from his right to his left, and when he does, he It's loses. open, yeah, it's open right and, there. Uh, and he's know, a what, sophomore as junior. well? Junior. And it, First time for him to be back playing since three weeks ago. Little rust. So anyway, you know, I thought last night they had ripped the ball out, but it wasn't. It was just a change. Right. Was changing the ball. From of course, the, right there. That, the right that. to the left, and you just can't do that in traffic. So anyway, we end up uh, giving them a touchdown there as they're running the kick out power and we're just not doing a very good job at all. Just that was running. a scroll down easy street, that last yeah. touchdown I mean, run. He, he wasn't even he wasn't wasn't touched going no. in. And you got a safety stepping up in there and he's having to take on the backside guard. Right. And, uh, and that's not a good match for us. No. No. And so, uh, you know, you gotta you gotta get linebackers there before the safety gets there. And First and ten, <clears throat> best field position we've had all night long. Even though we didn't, uh, even though it's only the it twenty-five. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and then we get a penalty. So we didn't help ourselves any. So now we're in a first and 15. You know, from an old from an old running back or blocking back or whatever I was, I had to run. I had to run some and, and being not the swiftest person in the world. Don't take that second cut, guys. Uh, you know, run straight ahead. Don't don't yeah. don't think you're going to out. One you know, cut, head for the goal. Go line. go straight. Uh, you know, run try to run over them, run through them, because you cannot run around them. There are too many of them. Tried to run a little draw play there with Austin Mullins, pick up a couple of yards. It brings us to the end of the first quarter. We're down 14-0. We had hoped to be up 14-0. I mean, we really the first play of the game we were going for. You know, going for going, going for, for it all. a juggler, uh, just because we wanted something good, right? Positive to happen for us, help us with our confidence. And um, right now, our, we don't have a whole lot of confidence, and we uh. play that way. We play unsure, and um, you know, uh, we've tried several things, patting them on the back, telling them to be all right. We'll get it corrected here to turning the heat up to where. 
uh, you're trying to make them feel as much pressure as you can make them feel on a practice field. And uh, neither neither way has been successful for us yet. Yeah. So we've got to find the way that can get us to where we've got a little confidence in what we're doing. And and they'll they'll find that when they find a little bit of success. And they do. You know, they, when they find that little bit of success, they'll go, Hey, wait a minute. We can do this. Well, you can watch it when we play the freshman on Monday night and the junior varsity game on Monday night. Uh, you know, they're a lot more aggressive. They're a lot more confident in themselves. Same plays. Same players. It's just that they're they're more confident because they think, hey, I can go against this guy. Yeah, yeah. And that's very important. That's very important. What we'll do right now, folks, is take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with the second quarter. Welcome to Merle Norman, located inside the Downtown Avenues at 115 Northwest Atlantic Street, Tullahoma. Merle Norman Cosmetics since 1931 are researched, developed, manufactured, and packaged in the USA using the highest quality ingredients and unmatched customer service to help women look and feel better about themselves. Also in the avenues is Christie's Gifts featuring clothing, jewelry, scarves, and many specialty items for women and children. Looking for that special gift? Christie's has it. Want to feel good in your skin? Visit Merle Norman. Want to feel good about what's on your skin? Visit Christie's Gifts, both inside the Downtown Avenues, 115 Northwest Atlantic Street, Tullahoma. Unlike all the rest, Southern Community Bank will provide you with a different banking experience because you are our first priority. Our services are intuitive. Our team is friendly. Our approach is refreshing. Our support to the community is unwavering. And our service is clearly unique. We offer accounts that make banking simple and hassle-free with all the conveniences you want and need most. Call Southern Community Bank and experience the bank that is unlike all the rest. All I have to do to think about what I was physically before and what I am now, and I don't ever want to go back to that original situation. The overall mission of the rehab team is always what is best for the patient and how we can facilitate maximum potential from every resident. Well, the most important thing to me is that I'm allowed to do whatever I need, want to do, you know. Everyday Miracles, Life Care Center of Tullahoma. It's not invoice. It's not MSRP. It's not Christmas Day, although it may feel like it. It's the lowest prices in Middle Tennessee, period. Get to Stan McNabb Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram or Stan McNabb Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac before these prices are gone forever. Open up the second quarter here. We're going to try to get behind them. And we're trying for John Moore and get pass interference call against Franklin County. So, yeehaw. First down, out to the 45. And uh, we let the defensive end take both of us. Scares us out of giving the ball and grabs the quarterback. And we take a shot here. We get John Michael Moore behind them. And so we're down, getting Looking down good. where we got a chance now. We can make this thing a 14-7 game. That's right. Excitement's in the air. And we come back, and we don't run the correct route. Quarterback throws a good pass. Receivers are not where they need to be. So uh, second and 10, nothing lost there. But again, we get buffaloed. And instead of handing the ball off and making him take it, then, uh, you know, we end up doing spoiling nothing. a good opportunity. Yeah. With three poor, poorly executed plays. Now we had our fourth poor executed play. 
and Chase does a great job just getting the punt off. And so we make a couple of good plays in a row, and then we make four bad four bad ones, and then they take it to the house. And again, you uh, saw a defensive back wrestling with a wide receiver, and we don't have, we we got to figure this thing out. That if I stay tied up with the offensive man, he wins. And um, they get one blocker, we get a defender, and if we don't get off that defender, they win. Right. Yeah, and particularly with that kind of speed that kid's got, I mean, they're gone. <clears throat> and it doesn't take as long as you think. They yeah. don't have to tie you Here, up all that long. We were going to get up the sideline and get a big time return, and uh, the guy's able to just get enough of us to push us out of bounds. We run Bryson Corn here on a sweep. He picks up good yardage. We're going to come back, run it again into the boundary, and again we pick up good yardage. Uh, And then we run it the opposite direction and we just don't block it correctly and so we end up turning the guy loose and he looks like a hero. Um, and so when I'm saying that we're all contributing to this yes. pass, we're all <coughs> I understand. And uh, you know we're we're just we're shooting ourselves, including me. And here we try to get the ball to Caleb Stroop. They've got good coverage, so we're going to punt it back to them. Try to pin them down. And again, great job. We've got them back down inside the 10 yard line. Not for long. Unfortunately, not for long. You know, there will come a time again where there'll be, we'll have a defense that we get people backed up like that. Uh, there will be no parting of the Red Sea like you see right there. We'll win <laughs> those battles and we'll keep them backed up and we'll get the ball right back at the 40 yard line there you and go. be ready to put it in. But right now, we're a long ways away from those days. Quarterback's going to keep it here. Good and job good there. Good job there, Jeremy Dameron. Uh, Jeremy had a good ball game last night. Uh, he did what he was coached to do, I'll put it that way, you know. And I th saw him make some plays. Uh, there were a couple of times when we brought him underneath the offensive tackle and he ran the thing down from behind. He took on the lead blocker. and uh, Sometimes that's all he took on. Sometimes he would take two or three of them down. Um, Poor tackling, race Marin makes them at least line up and get back in the huddle again. And we're there, race. Look at him. Race Marin. Good know, job. The only thing I don't like about that, that's a safety beating the linebackers there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Gotta, you gotta bless his, bless his pee picking was, little heart. Yeah, but they, they're there. They're supposed to be there. Mopping it up. Uh, that's what bothers me. And that's what we've got to get better at. And it's not something that the defensive coaches don't know. I mean, we're subbing people in and out constantly. Right. Uh, with Coach Sis. Trying to figure trying it to out. Say, do you not understand, you know, what you got to do here? And, they run a reverse and Good Tommy job. McCullough stays at home. Worth Watson <coughs> slowed it down. Tommy finished it off, and we're gonna make them punt. It. So they're in that. There you three, go. You know they're they're in that other 97 percent. There you, you go. End up inside right. the 10. And That's good. You make them punt it, and then lo and behold, and make a punt. Uh, uh, yeah, down yeah. to our one foot line. And uh, and then we're gonna move. Uh, you know. uh, real question: Did he go out of bounds with that ball? I mean, if he if he t 
touched it inside the field of play and carried it across the goal line, how does all that work in, in high school? A lot of it's just judgment. That's sort of what I feel. I mean, uh, they ruled that he had control of the ball in the field of play. But he carried it into the end zone. Yeah, and here we just can't pitch and catch. We had a chance to go <clears throat> yep. line there. And instead, Three. we got to punt it to him, and now you're not going to, you know, you're you're on your own four yard line, and so. Three percent. You get a thirty. You get a thirty-yard punt, and now they're taking over the ball in an area of the field that the chances of you scoring is like seventy percent, and right. the chances of a touchdown are, you know, fifty-something percent, right. sixty-something right. percent. Right. I mean, yo. Know, so they're sitting in a good situation. That's what you wanted your defense to do: come in and stuff them, and then make them punt the ball back to you. And that's a good job right there. That's a sophomore Ty Cox making the play. And uh, Ty didn't play perfect last night, but he played hard. And like right there, he let the quarterback out and around him. And now, you know, it's over. Uh, we're not even close. We didn't get lined up properly. And one miss and that guy's gone. It is against us. Yeah. All right, it shouldn't be that way, but that's the way it is right now. And it gets frustrating. Uh, well, you know, that, 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 we've got that, little, that little bit of time. That, in the open field, and I don't know how many games we're going to have to play before we finally tackle an athlete in the open field. Because apparently we don't have anybody as fast and as quick for our no. kids to <laughs> practice against tackling. I, I don't know, it's a frustrating thing. Well, that's just like hitting a that's just like hitting a 95 mile an hour fastball. Unless you have somebody on your team that you can practice with that's throwing at 95, you're not going to hit that ball. Yeah. Bryson Corn rips off a first down. Look at that! Isn't rips that pretty? Off another first down. Go get him, big boy. I'm glad to see him. Four net. Glad, glad to have him back. And uh, then we get a high snap, and so instead of us maybe being down around the 25 to 30 yard line, we're back out to the 45. And Austin Mullins carries it back down. We're back down to the 32, 33, 34. But we could be down at the 20 right now. And then we have a legitimate shot. And as it is, we're going to take two shots that uh, we're just out of time. We're right, out of time. Right, out. right. So we got no choice. <clears throat> Sling it. Try to take two shots at them. They're back way off. And uh, here, you know, we get pushed out of bounds. And anyway. That guy in the middle, that guy lagging in the middle was, it's hard to see that guy. I know it is. But but that guy's the guy that the ball that, that the ball can get to. Jeremy Dameron, Maude Taylor, and Bryson Corn on the tackle there. 27-0 halftime, and uh, I'm sure frustrated players, frustrated coaches, uh, really thought that we had a shot at being in this ball game. Right. And here right. we find ourselves in another ball game we're not in. And and, and had and, and the way the ball was moving, just like there toward the end and a couple of times throughout this ball game, the way the ball was moving, you know, I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna go down there. We are gonna get in this ball game. Yeah. And we just and we you know, fumble penalty, whatever happens, but that's the way it is. Uh, we're gonna take a short commercial break and then we'll be back with the band performance and then we'll be back with the third quarter after that. See you in a minute. Whether it's a home loan, a business loan, a personal loan, a loan for any good reason, Citizens Tri-County Bank is here to help you with the loans you need. With caring, friendly, lending pros at convenient offices across Tullahoma, we love our community and we take pride in helping people get the loans they need. Citizens Tri-County Bank, focused on making loans for the individuals and businesses of our community.
football is a tradition in our community, so is Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration. We were here then, we are here now, serving our community for over 45 years. Continue the winning combination. Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration for the win. Call 455-8757, the name you can trust. Are you a shoeanista with no place local to find your style? Well, now you don't have to travel any further than Bren's Boutique, located at the Downtown Avenues, 115 Northwest Atlantic Street in Tullahoma. Just inside the front doors on the right, from funky to formal, you can find the fit and style that will make you smile at Bren's. Owner Brenda Kemp offers brands like Michael Norris, Boheme, and Misty Purses, Bandolero and Yellow Box Shoes, and Joseph Ribcock clothing. Want that accessory splash that none of your friends will have? Brent's offers a selection of one-of-a-kind handbags and jewelry with just the right bling. So if your shoe selection doesn't stack up, find what you've been looking for. 115 Northwest Atlantic Street, Tullahoma. Since 1889, Traders Bank has been helping our neighbors realize their dreams. Whether our customers are looking to put a roof over their heads, try their hand at entrepreneurship, or see themselves behind the wheel of a shiny new car. The folks at Traders Bank have always been ready to dive in with them. Because at Traders, we lend you more than just money. We lend you our good name. Traders Bank, you're welcome.
Daddy Billy's Deli Bar and Grill has been open at 119 Northwest Atlantic Street in Tullahoma for over 40 years, serving up good times and great food. Owner Nick Smith has made a great investment to remodel the inside, which is now a non-smoking facility, and add a great outdoor patio area with a covered stage, a fire pit, and a second bar where smoking is allowed. The food remains great at Daddy Billy's, from burgers to panini, salads, wings, with new items being added all the time. Great sides from onion straws, flat fried potatoes, and Tullahoma's only corn salad. Music and sports are important at Daddy Billy's with jam night every Wednesday night. Bands and players on the weekends and big screen TVs all over the place to watch sports. Daddy Billy's is now open Monday through Saturday and closed on Sunday. As a non-smoking venue inside, all ages are welcome to enjoy the food and fun at Daddy Billy's. With a great selection of domestic, imported, and local craft beers, a full liquor and wine selection, and the best food around, there is no reason for you not to be part of the good times at Daddy Billy's, 119 Northwest Atlantic Street, downtown Tullahoma. Trucks, trucks, and more trucks. Keith Barnett here with the Russell Barnett Automotive family, and we have your next truck. From the Ford F-Series, the Ram, Chevrolet, or the GMC, then look no further than the Russell Barnett family. With over 350 new and pre-owned trucks to choose from, now is the time to buy. Stop by one of our five locations. That's Russell Barnett Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Chevrolet GMC, Ford of Winchester, and Russell Barnett Ford in Kia of Tullahoma, or visit us on the web at russellbarnett.com. Why buy anywhere else? Are your teeth dull, chipped, stained, or crooked? If so, call the dental practice of Dr. Mike Law. For a wider, brighter, more attractive smile, Dr. Long offers cosmetic dentistry at its best through whitening, bonding, and veneers. Dr. Long also uses laser technology, eliminating anesthesia and drilling. When you are ready to enhance your smile, call Dr. Mike Long, family practice dentistry for 29 years. If you're looking for fuel, food, or fun, don't forget the Dameron Brothers stores. The Short Stop has fuel, food, and beverages. The Liquor Locker carries all of your favorite brands of wines and spirits. It has party supplies, beverages, and the area's best selection of premium cigars. So for all your party needs, Jeff and Jay say, come on by, and thank you for the support of our businesses. Quarter, folks, we're back and we're going to take the kickoff here. Matt Ross on the return and he's going to keep battling until he gets up to about the 40 yard line. And at least he's running toward the goal. Going forward, going that's forward. What you want to do. Well, you know, we've done pretty good on kickoff returns. Of course, that's the thing we've had most practice with that's correct. over the first two weeks. We get a lot of practice in. We open up and uh, Actually, had a we were going deep there and not able to go deep. Chase does a great job just to get rid of the football as they bring two linebackers and we don't pick up either one of them. Um, probably a poor play call by me there. Uh, we ran something that was a special play and. Uh, you know, it was probably a first and ten play, so you could line up and play again instead of a third down and six play. Yeah. So. Comes the quarterback on the counter. And uh, Tommy McCullough, Ahmad Taylor on the tackle. You know, Coach, I think I, I think back when I played ball, or you, I don't think, and maybe we did, but I think you guys have a whole lot more uh, to draw from from the statistical side of the game than we did 40 years ago. 
I don't think the coaches kept up with it or had the capability of so keeping up with it that much. Staffs that were so huge that you. Right, you know, right. And, and that all comes out of the college game or the pro game where they have all those, you know. All of a sudden, you know, if you've got third down and so and so at such and such a time of the game on such and such a yard line, here's four plays you need to run. Right. I know that when Frosty Holt was the head football coach at Carson Newman, he was an older gentleman when I played at Carson Newman, and he was a longtime football baseball coach there for probably 25, 30 years. Uh, I asked him one time, I said, Coach Holt, how did you figure out what you had to stop, you know, what you, who the best players were, because there was no film swap when he was <coughs> Right. He said, I got my hair cut every Saturday that we played on the road. He said, the team traveled by bus and I traveled by car. And he said, I went to the barber shop that looked like it was the fullest. And I would sit in there for two hours to get my hair cut. In the opposing talk, town? In the opposing town. <laughs> and we and we talked about the we talked football. Game. And they didn't know and who he was. They didn't have a clue who he was. And he'd get his scout report. So he got it. recognized one time. And um, That's great. But that's how he got his scouting report. He found out who's hurt and he found out uh, he said, obviously, we made phone calls to coaches that were buddies of ours that had played them and stuff. But right. he said, so that's how you found out. And uh, Well, you know, when I, I was thinking about that a, a minute ago as they're going on about their business right here. I don't mean to take away from that. Uh, you know, you make, you make calls on the on the uh, three on the three yard line inside the five yard line that you don't make on the forty yard line, and it's sort of like a prevent defense prevents you from winning. You know, you have won a game all all through the thing, and then in the fourth quarter you change everything. Well, uh, wouldn't it be just as good to use that forty yard forty thirty five yard line play down there? Uh, it just depends. If I'm throwing a vert, they wouldn't because now I'm throwing it out of the back of the end zone. So I take that play out. I'm not going to use it. No, no. I mean, when you're on your three-yard line, head it out, head it, oh, nine, head it out. 97 yards down the field. Uh, well, again, when anytime you're backed up, there's the thing that's in the back of your mind is uh, don't do, lose the ball. Do we have enough confidence being able to execute and not give up? You know, every time you put the ball in the air, there's a chance that it's going to be intercepted. So, for instance, on that play that I was talking about a minute ago that should have been, I should have used it on a first and ten play. That's what it, when I had planned on it. Um, we were taking a calculated guess at what their coverage was going to be. And great run. Look at that. Yeah, it's good to see Bryson. I'm telling you, it's good to have him back. And, uh, but every now and then, don't you just let your gut take over? Sure. And I mean, to me, that's that's when that's what wins stuff. Taking uh, that chance. Yeah. Or loses. Or, or loses stuff loses sometimes. <laughs> and, and you know, you just uh, it still comes down to blocking. Great, great pitch and catch right there. And tackling. And. Angles. That's what the game's always been, and uh, you can schematic things as much as you want to, but if you can't block, right, you can't tackle, or you don't understand the angles that you have to take to catch somebody, doesn't make any uh, difference. Doesn't make any difference. And as I watch number 30 there run down the field, it's Elijah Walker. Yeah. <laughs> and so anyway. That goes all the way back to the captain thing at the first. And Elijah's a junior who plays his heart out. He's going to play a lot in the fourth quarter at corner. Uh, not very big, but a big, big, big time heart. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I apologize to Elijah for freezing up there. We got the it, though. We got it. And uh, as soon as I saw him going on the kickoff there, even though the kickoff was away from him. And there goes Elijah, giving everything he's got. Yeah. 
Here comes quarterback sweep. And Caleb Stroop gets uh, crushed right there. But you know what? Caleb Stroop is making them do some things there. And uh, one's holding him, and the other one blocks him in the back. So take your choice. I'm glad the official saw it. Um, I'm screaming it on the sideline. It didn't do a whole lot of good. But the back judge saw it. And uh, so we end up getting a big play, knocking them back there. It's 33 to 7. Uh, at this point in time, you don't, you know, uh, if we hold them right here and get the ball back and go down the field and score, we'll put the hammer down and go. But if we don't, um, then it's time to start letting Let some, some people play. play. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about that calling those plays. I can remember, of course, W.C. Cooper was my coach, and, and we didn't have the equipment that you have as far as communication mm -hmm. from, uh, from, uh, from the uh, press box to the field, from the field out there, and they would call these plays, and, and sometimes they'd call a play, and, and of course, back when we played, it was a 2-3-7, I mean, it was three yards, four yards in a cloud of dust, and, and so he'd call it the 2-3-7, and Gilbert over here was getting killed, and a 3-3, which was the same play on the other right. side, you know, Jesse over here was taking his man. Well, they didn't know what was. They didn't know that. They call it two three seven. We change it to a three three, because this guy, this guy was, this guy was dead. He was over. His game was finished, and this guy was still was. competing. I got you. And uh, we'd go back. I'd go back to the sideline, and he, he'd look. He just look at me, and he said. You changed my play, and and I I look at him and go, yeah, aren't you glad? <laughs> <laughs> when it works. <laughs> when it works. Uh, when it works. Well, I know that uh, Charlie Mill <laughs> told the story uh, about somebody that he played ball with in Mississippi, and uh, coaches sent him in with the play, and they don't run it. Yeah. So the coach. He's shuttling players in and out, so the kid comes back over the sideline, and the coach said, you didn't understand what I said? He said, yeah, I did. And so time to run another play, so they run another play. Now he's sending the play back in with his kid. Kid goes back out there, and uh, they don't run the play again. <laughs> so the kid comes back to the sideline as they're shuttling in and out. The coach looked at him, and he said, what do you not understand about that play? He says, you don't understand. I'm not carrying the football against them. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. I don't want, I don't want to <laughs> yeah. So he was challenging the play. When he got out there, he told him another play that he wasn't carrying the ball. I love it. it. And I he said it. they were getting beat. I, I think he said 63 to 6 no, or something I, like that. I, I got a date tonight. I want to be able to, I want to, be able to put my arm around her. That's a movie. Yeah. Uh, oh, Lordy, folks, we'll be back with the fourth quarter here in just a minute on the John Holly fifth quarter show. The wash spot on North Jackson Street in Tullahoma is your new state-of-the-art high-tech express tunnel car wash that gets your car clean quickly and beautifully. We have four washes available from the $6 express wash to the $12 supreme clean featuring DuraShield total car protectant. Just pick your wash and let the express tunnel wash leave the dirt behind. And wash spot has installed a new high-pressure rinse system that greatly improves your car wash quality. It gives you 40 jet nozzles producing 650 pounds per square inch. Mud, dirt, and burnt poop, beware. After the wash, you can help yourself to one of the free vacuums. WashBot has added a mini detail service. It includes the Supreme Clean. They vacuum your vehicle, clean all windows inside and out, clean dash and instrument panel, shampoo two front floor mats, clean all door jams, hand towel the entire vehicle, and dress the wheels and tires. The mini detail is now available at the WashBot on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for only $30. Come by seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. to get the best wash in town at a great price. We're located at 2180 North Jackson Street in Tullahoma. The Wash Spot, locally owned and operated. The choices we make today will impact tomorrow. Choosing natural gas today is the responsible energy choice for your home, your family, and our environment. 
Almost all natural gas we use is produced right here in North America. And with plentiful gas reserves, we can enjoy a safe and reliable energy future. Natural gas, the comfortable and responsible energy choice for today and tomorrow. Brought to you by Elk River Public Utility District. When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Benny, but all right, we're back. Fourth quarter here, and um, Corbin Smith on the tackle. Uh, actually, that was the end of the third quarter. They had one more play that they ran there. Now we're in the fourth quarter, and they're punting the ball to us. And John Moore doesn't get quite to the football, but uh, we're able to recover the fumble there. Uh, all those things he'll learn. Well, he came after the ball at the right speed, and then he hesitated and he just for a second instead of, instead of running on through that catch, and um, and because uh, he would have got hit, he would he would have gotten hit if we ran through that catch. But he needed to make that catch right. and take that hit. Yeah, we want to we want to make the catches. We don't want to let the ball hit the ground. And uh, he and the other one, uh, our freshman Palmer. Uh, but they're doing a good job. And Nick Barstead at quarterback hits Race Mare in there as uh, he bought some time, and we get called for having a illegal lineman downfield though, as it took so long. What is the? What is the? How far can those guys be downfield? Is about it the line yards, of scrimmage? About two yards. They'll give you a, a, two yards there. Somebody in front of me it said, right said oh, they weren't five yards, they were four and a half. I was. Uh, no, it's three's the max. <laughs> four and a half. For the college much. level. I think they've even brought it back to two. And uh, if you're at, you know, one yard or two yards, if you're not just absolutely blatant, blatant about right. it, they're not going to call that. call that unless, you know, you're down there. Throw a pick right there, and that brings the end of that drive. and. We have just constantly shot ourselves in the foot. Well, that was sort of a shovel pass kind of a play, wasn't it, in a way? Uh, it just wasn't. A it wasn't well there? Play. Yeah, okay. I thought it was Tebow was out there for a minute. It was, it was a jumper. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had great success, though, in that jump pass when we, back in the 60s. Uh, I know I heard my dad talk about Bill Wade playing at Vanderbilt, throwing that jump pass. And, uh, so anyway, give it to that big fullback headed up towards the line, or and right one step he just stop and go up there and shoot it like a basketball shot to an end coming across. We've tried it several times over the years. And, uh, Barstead keeping the ball there. Cameron Halliburton in playing now. And uh, bring the blitz, and blitz kind of runs over us. Nick does a great job buying time and then finds an open receiver. And Isn't that pretty? Hits freshman there, Quentin Howard. And 
and uh, got you saw Cameron Howard Burton come flying into the pitcher trying to go block somebody, and then we fumble the football. So <laughs> just one of those nights. There you, you, know, you go. You just sit there. There you, you go. go. Okay. You just feel sorry, but yeah. Cameron Halliburton weighs what? 130? Probably in that area. Yeah. He got he got thrown down like a rag doll. And defensively, um, got some young kids making some plays here. Jump off sides for the second time during the night. Uh, was that it? Just twice? Uh, as far as uh, that's that's really not today. that bad for a young bunch of kids only to be off sides twice in a night. Uh, if you watch the football. It help, you know, instead of listening to the quarterback <laughs> since you're playing defense. Uh, okay, okay. So, so zero is a good number zero for is that. A good number for jumping off sides. <laughs> okay, coach. Yeah. Lesson taught. <laughs> Sometimes you miss a line off sides, but anyway. We made them punt again, but uh, we don't fumble it again as the young freshman. Hunter Palmer tries to make the catch, and again, he got a little indecisive about whether to let it hit, bounce, or try and catch it on the run. And so they get it back, and uh, so they're going to grind out the rest of the clock here, the rest of the quarter. Uh, they'll get some runs against us right here. They hadn't been able to hurt us, and uh, but they'll get some runs. Elijah Walker on the tackle. Elijah's been one of the pleasant surprises. He made a couple of tackles last week that were against some big time athletes. Sam Brock, first one to make contact there. Sophomore corner and play safety for some too. Catches the ball every now and then too, Catches doesn't he? Catches the ball every now and then. He's one of those that we just need. He's actually got good football intelligence. Uh, we just need his body to come on and mature. Yeah. And I think that was Elijah Walker and Hunter Palmer that make the hit to keep him from getting into the end zone. And at least we're battling right Bang. here. Bang! Good got hit right there. To keep him out of that end zone. Don't want him to score. Number four. Who's number four? That would be Sam. Sam Brock. Okay. Right here, Jake Lashinsky is going to make the tackle. Bang! Keeps him out of the end there, you zone. there you go. There you go. There you go. And uh, that's a ball game. And uh, we are now 0-2. And, and my biggest concern is we're not competitive. It would be different if we'd been beaten by 10 points, 14 points. Then you at least know you're, that there's little things that you can do to keep working on, to keep correcting, that gets you to the situation to where if you make enough plays, you win the football game. Right now, we have so many problems. And what I told the team last night, um, there used to be certain teams that you played that you you didn't have to be mentally ready to roll at the top of your game. You were going to win. Well, the coin is now flipped. We're that team that nobody has to play their best against, and they're still going to win. Win, and uh, we've got to get that changed around. And um, and the biggest thing that we can do, we can't do anything about our physical abilities that's a slow process that's not a rapid change right and right we got guys that are getting stronger right now absolutely are we lifting heavy during the football season absolutely we got guys setting new maxes because we know that they that we can't take and quote maintain during a football season because we're too Week. Right, right. And well, you're you're you're, so, you're not a senior, junior, so senior, late in football we're, thing. We're we're working. Right. All right. But that's a long term process. Sure it is. Sure it is. That's a year process. Yeah. To get to where we got to get to physically. From a standpoint of 
what we can control is eliminating the mistakes, making them less and less and less and less so that by the time we get to week five, six, seven, we are giving ourselves a chance to, to win. be in ball yeah. games. Now, yeah. when we play somebody really good, which we are going to do this coming Friday night over at Lewisburg, um, we don't have great odds, okay? And you can run up a white flag and just say, we give, we're not coming, you win 1-0. The computer says we're 70-point underdog, okay? Or you do like we did in 96 when we were a beat-up, battered football team, and we held seven starters out because we were going to play Coffee County in Week 10, and we had to go to Smyrna, and Smyrna was ranked number two in the state in our classification, and we as coaches made a decision, we're going to get these starters healthy. We're going to get Smyrna, we don't have much of a chance. We don't let it go. We got a good chance to beat Coffee County, and if we're healthy, if we're not healthy, we don't have a chance against them. And all we did was go up there and had one Lamar Carter that they didn't couldn't figure out how to cover, and we jumped out there in front of them, and we had a sophomore named Cameron Howard that intercepted two passes in the end zone, one of them securing the win of the game for us, and we upset the number two team in the in the state. <laughs> right. And uh, and that's kind of the dilemma we face here. Or we don't make some changes this week, absolutely. If it hurts us this coming Friday night because we're playing some guys that haven't been playing and so forth, so be it. If we happen to upset Lewisburg, we'll all celebrate. But we're going to get ready for the long term of the right, season. Right. And our goal is by week five or six that we are putting ourselves in positions to win football games there you go. Um, <laughs> if we can. And that's, you know, uh, I wish, you know, I'd started this process four weeks ago, but we didn't. And uh, we had done things like we had always done. We were playing kids both ways. We had set up rotations to try to get some guys rest when they needed rest. Um, but I'm going to try something a little different because there's there no go. use sure. trying what we've been trying because it's not working. We're not getting we're not getting where we got to get too fast enough. Well, and, and you so. and, and you you know that way you're not beating your kids up that you've got that are players that 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 you need to uh, to secure a ball game that maybe are so beat up and tired they can't give you the effort when you need them right. at a certain part of that game to be able to produce to they can't they, play, they, they can't produce because they're worn out and beat up and so you know, and I, I think it's smart I can tell you this you know I'm not upset I, we do need to become a better practice team we're not a good practice team right now but a lot of that is is because we don't have enough of them that know how to practice right right okay so we know that and we know that's a learning process they will. This uh, group, they will. We're not upset with what they're doing, though, overall. We've got kids that don't get to lift during the school day. Our fourth period, PE2, is gutted right now. And uh, so we've got kids that get up and they have to be at school, ready to go. They're, they're stretching at 5.45 a.m. on Mondays and Wednesday mornings. And those Mondays, for some of those, they start at, at school at 5.45. They get home from a JV game at 9.30 or 10 o'clock Monday night. Now, there's not many of us as adults like working those kind of days. And we've no. got young men that are willing to do that, and they're putting what they can into Well, why into can't it. they get in a PE class? Uh, somehow or another, You can't say that. Have, have, <laughs> I can say it. No, why I, aren't they getting in a PE I, class? They're choosing to take other classes. The state's changed some things and so forth, and it has just created... It's it's created problems. Do y'all have Your fourth son, period? Do y'all have fourth period anymore? Is that a football period? Uh, or the last period of the day? 
it is no longer a football class right now. We're working to get that turned back around and so forth. But uh, it's just, it, it's not easy right now for these young men. They're making a commitment. Oh, yeah. And, and I want people to understand that. Do I get upset with them on Friday night? Do I get upset during practice? Yes. But I get upset at myself. I get upset at coaches. Uh, it's a frustrating time right now. But we're going to keep working. And it's the only thing I know to do. I know what it takes to be successful. And it begins on the practice field. That's right. Okay? There's some things that we've got to be able to reestablish back inside the program as a whole to help our football program get back up to where it was not very long ago. I mean, you know, we all uh, would love to be at the 2010, 2011 level as far as being competitive. Right, right. And well, right uh, now, we'll take 2014 as far as being competitive. Uh, but we, you know, there's some things that we've got to do, things I've got to do that we've got to be able to do in order to give our young men an opportunity against the people they're competing against. Well, and there's a lot of these young men, and say you have, you, you have to get upset during practice uh, and stuff like that. You know, there's a lot of these young, young people in society right now who've never been told no, who've never been told that's not good enough, who've never been told you need to do better than this, that what you've done, oh, well, it's okay, honey, it'll be fine. Uh, It'll be fine. Everything's all right. Well, look, guess what? Life's not that way. And somebody needs to be telling some of these young people that it's not good enough. You need to try harder, and he, I'm going to show you how. And that's what a coach does. And that's what a, a coach, coach does. tries to get you from point A to point B. That's yeah, what he tries to right. do. Not mama and, and dad. He's sometimes coach. getting to that point B is a, it's a tough, a tough, tough, tough hard road. thing to get there. And when you get them to point B, all right, I got them to point B. Now I got to get them to point C. And that's the role of a coach. He's trying to always, you know, I heard one guy say it's like being the old stagecoach. You got to get them from this to here, and there's a lot of dangers in between. Oh, there's Indians, and there's, yeah. there's. But you got to do it. Outlaws. That's, that's your job that's as a coach it. is to get them to go to places that they really don't think they can get there. That's right. And once they get there, the light comes on and they go, oh, my goodness. Yeah. And I, can't I tell might you be able to make it to point C. Right. I, I can't tell you how many seniors that I've had that when that light has turned on and they said, why didn't I see this when I was a sophomore? Why didn't I didn't see? Didn't know how to see. I thought I was giving you great effort and couldn't understand why you guys were always pushing and harping. And he, now I'm out of time. But and I, I see. I finally figured it out. But I see. Yeah. So anyway. As long as they leave and they, they can see when they walk out the door, that's a good thing, folks. You know, football, team sports is the greatest thing in the absolute world, and it will be with your young people forever. They will draw on it every day of their life, knowing how to get up. At, get back up like Rocky said it's not how you how many times you get knocked down it's how many times you get back up and you know team sports teaches that football one of the best because uh, no no other team sport I don't think ask you to endure as much pain <laughs> well you know um, I did a little bit of wrestling in PE classes right back when I was that's tough in sport. the day that's a tough old sport but you know what it's me one-on-one -on -one against somebody about my size. Right. Okay. You're not trying to fend off a big guy coming from over right. here. It's a tough sport. And I really don't care about you up there at the heavyweight or you down there at the low end right. of the weight. Right. I'm worried about me. And not that it's not team, but why do they have two tournaments? You know, right. it's still basically, it's like tennis. It's like. Right, right. You know, it's individual sport. You got to win those individuals. I can be really bad and you can be really good and if I can't do my job you don't have any success in the sport of football. Team sport. That's right. That's right. So uh, we just keep learning folks. You go with us and like we said last week this is going to be a great trip. It's liable to be a two or three year trip.
but it's going to be a great journey and you're going to be able to watch progress along the way and you're going to understand what Tullahoma Wildcat football is really all about and it's wonderful is what it's all about. For Coach John Olive, I'm John Gray. We'll see you next week in Marshall County. Marshall County. And Pittsburgh. that ball game starts at the same time, 7, 7 o'clock. And be safe on your trip over there. We do need your support and need to have you in the seat. Cleats in the seats, folks. That's what good fans do. We'll see you there. Thank you very much and good day.